Today, I'll show you how to manage player data in PlayFab based on this simple example where we can customize our character and use it across different devices. The player data allows you to create a dataset that is separate for each player. It's stored as a key value pairs, which means that each value has its own key and you can search for them as it would be a dictionary. The use cases for these are endless. You can store save data here, game progress, or some kind of player properties. In this video, we'll look at the case where we store character appearance. So I've created the simple character editor where you can customize the hat, skin color, and beard of our character. For each of these customization options, we have five different designs to choose from and I've added a simple counter to show you which number is currently selected. Also, as you can see, I've already added the two buttons. One of them says Get Appearance, which will make an API call to PlayFab and get character data. And the second one, Save Appearance, which will send all of our changes to the server. Before we begin, here is a small reminder that you can follow my other tutorials, all based on PlayFab, to set it up in Unity and create a leaderboards in your game. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to be notified about new videos in the series. Now, back to our game. Let's start with editing our PlayFab script. As you can see, I have already created a login method that connects us to the PlayFab. I also have this character editor script that allows us to get the current ID for each of the customization options. I've also already prepared get appearance and save appearance methods and linked them with the buttons. First, we'll look how to send out character data. In save appearance, type var request equals new update user data request. Open bracket data equals new dictionary string string. Open bracket. Here we need to specify which key value pairs we like to send out and modify on the server. In our case, it will be hat with value of character editor dot hat, skin with value of character editor dot skin, and finally beard with value of character editor dot beard. We can now send the call. It will go like this: PlayFab client API dot update user data and pass request. What to do if you successfully receive the data? In my case, it will be a function called onDataSend. And finally, what happens when there is an error in sending the data? That will be onError, the same one we used in previous videos. That's it for now. Go back to the Unity and let's test it out. I'll customize my character to give it one two, three values, and press the Save Appearance button. As you can see, we have received a successful message from the PlayFab. That means that if we go now to the PlayFab dashboard, find our player, and press Player Data Title, we'll see a free appearance settings. Yeah, but now, what can we do with them? See, whenever we exit our game and go back, our character customization clears out. Of course, we can easily implement a local saving, and that will do for an offline game, but what if we like to open it on a different computer or a mobile device with the same PlayFab account? That's exactly why we are saving it here, and now I'll show you how to get this data. Go back to our script, and now let's edit the getAppearance method. This time, we'll start by creating the API call. So type PlayFab client API dot get user data and pass in new get user data request without any arguments on data received, which we'll create in a second, and as always, on error. Now let's create on data received method that will get a get user data result. Result. 
Open bracket. First, we'll type a simple debug information that the data has been successfully received. And then, we'll check if the received data contain all the information that we need. So type, if result.data does not equal null, and result.data contains key hat, and result.data contains key skin, and result.data contains key beard. If everything of that is true, we can send a method from character editor that I called setAppearance. It gets all the elements as a string ID, and to pass them, just type result.data hat, result.data skin, and result.data beard. Don't forget to type what happens if any of our elements can be found. I'll type else and debug.log player data not complete. That's it. To test everything, we can go back to the Unity, run the game and check if we will be able to get our player data. As you can see, everything works fine and our player editor has been updated. To finish things up, I think it's a good idea to run our getAppearance method just after successful logging in. That way, whenever a player enters our game, you can make sure he or she will see the updated data of the character. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it, subscribe it and check for other PlayFab and Unity tutorials. See you in the next video.